If you are looking for more ideas to enhance your model railroad, this video is for you. It doesn't matter what scale or time frame you model. Many of the techniques and materials will cross over into your plan. The following HO scale layout is for recreating the 1950s somewhere in California, where the Southern Pacific and Western Pacific once roamed. Many of the things you will see are explained in detail in our Volume 1 and Volume 2 full-length DVD videos of Build Better Model Railroads. Both DVDs have printable files for making templates and patterns as well as useful decorations. Let's get started. This latest layout was built in 2009 and recently expanded. It's the home of models that have been built over a 40-year span. This is the story of this layout plus many of these models and their various origins. We hope this presentation motivates others to visit their hobby dealers and seek out kits and supplies to support their hobby. This Walnut Creek station was built long ago for a planned Sacramento Northern traction layout. The plans eventually evolved to the Western Pacific and also the SP railroads in the 1950s. WP-727 is an Atherin Genesis GP-9 that only needed light weathering. In the last 15 or so years, the premium diesel locomotives offered in HO scale run smoother and quieter than many of our brass locomotives from the 70s and 80s. This Atlas FM Trainmaster is a prime example. It was originally in SP Scarlet and Gray colors and repainted in Black Widow colors. A Type 22 SP station was an American Model Builder's laser kit. It's a great model. Lasers have offered modelers with finer details compared to the old die-cut cardboard kits of earlier times. Next up is a Nabisco plant, scratch-built from illustration board and Titchy Train Group windows. These grain bins and grain leg are RIX products, R-I-X. The rear grain bins and top house are from Walther's. The building's front red letters and the rooftop sign, upper left, are kits from Blair Line Products laser kits with our own added lighting. Another illustration board model is this walnut processing plant located in the back alley area of our Walnut Creek town. The large boxy grain bin is from Walther's. These Butler Bin HO kits were available many years ago. These two were built with a wrap of photoshopped images of the corrugated sheet metal. Illustration board cuts clean with fresh single edge razor blades or number 11 X-Acto blades. Cutting in the corners is easier with a special tool from Micromark Tool Company. Illustration board and Straithmore board seem to be interchangeable terms. This material is laminated, high grade cardstock from art stores. The loading dock and steps are poplar and basswood. The windows were made in Photoshop and printed on glossy finish heavy paper. Unlit industrial building windows in daylight always seem to be black since they lack curtains behind them. Outside of town is a cattle loading siding. All the fencing, water tank and cattle loading pins are made from basswood strips. The trees are a mix of Woodland Scenics and JTT products through MRC. The windmill is from Walther's. The barn is a laser cut kit. This bird's eye view shows a rusty old trailer for the night watchman. To the right is a cut in the hills that the main line sweeps through. Next will be a Contemporary Times Sunset Models Brass SP260. These hills are all carved and painted on Owens Corning 3 inch thick pink extruded foam. The distant cows are actually in scale to create the illusion of greater depth. The country road has NJ International number 1095 crossbuck signals. This structure is from American Model Builder Laser Kit number 702, an interlocking tower. It has an extra window added on the lower floor. Inside is an interior, tower operator, and lighting. 
This paint factory is kit-bashed from a couple of Walther's 933-2970 railroad shop kits to form a 36-inch long building. The windows are Titchy Train Group tilt-out masonry types. The animated model neon sign is from Miller Engineering. Two sidings have boxcar loads out and tank car loads in to fill various paint making liquids into these tanks. You can see the piping and pump house. The paint factory and old Heinz food plant were typical of factories in Oakland, California into the 1950s that have all since relocated to other states than California. These three old model die casting covered hoppers were heavily reworked years ago since no square hatch models seemed available back then. These nice Atlas models were reworked to improve all the ladders and metal fittings. They were easy upgrades. New paint and decals finished the job. This was a 1950s era Silver Streak metal kit. The sides have the original remarkable factory paint job. This was one of many rescue cars bought at flea market train shows. Rebuilding brought scale roof walk, grab irons, trucks, and underbody details, and ladders. This poor old car had a fine underbody, detailed truss rods, and brake piping. It was worth saving and improving. The dry transfer decals are from CDS Lettering Incorporated in Ontario, Canada. It is not likely that the SN ever advertised their Comet passenger train in this way, but it sure looks nice. The same original builder made this 100-year-old flat car, and it received the same upgrades and the low sides for work train service. This mainline wooden kit was built back in the 1970 era, and it was about 4 feet too wide. It's a total rebuild and it has been narrowed and its height reduced to more scale proportions. Three of these Ambroid wooden kits of the early 1950s were bought in a sale and rebuilt, painted and custom decaled. More livestock loading pins are a recent feature. Two cars can be loaded at once and the siding is long enough to pull a second pair forward for loading. A cut-down plastic vitamin bottle cap serves as a watering tank. All the various gates are positionable. The loading platforms have swing gates that can accommodate door misalignment by several feet. These were also built on hinges to be positionable. The water tank is a Walther's kit with the tank substituted for a steel one. The pump house is to the left. All the fence surfaces that the cattle can touch have horizontal planking on both sides so they won't get scuffed up on the fence posts. The various holding pins are all fed from a long causeway that the wheeled adapter allows cattle truck unloading. The truck is a reworked Woodland Scenics item made to resemble the walnut trucks used in Walnut Creek long ago. An Atlas in-scale railroad bridge was kit-bashed to cross a creek under a county road, and it has a fabricated wide base all made from evergreen styrene shapes. All our roads are made from illustration board and coated with a layer of gesso mixed with black acrylic coloring. The cracks are drawn on with pen and India ink. Gray and black chalk dust are added last. Woodland Scenic's white road striping pins were used for the white lines. Wizard Oil Gas Station was built from a pair of Campbell's assay office wood kits. It was from an article in a 1980-something Railroad Model Craftsman magazine of a real station the author saw in a book. The proprietor, in this one, lives in an Airstream trailer behind the station. Looking through the trees brings an outdoor advertising sign of the Kaiser Willys car and its promise of 35 miles per gallon. Now back to the industrial area of Oakland for a few more views.
The Westinghouse building was once part of Oakland, and the Walther's kit of American hardware supply had the same look. It was kit bashed into this large structure. Westinghouse was like GE, and they made heavy power equipment, elevators, jet engines, escalators, and countless appliances. Here's the Sherwin-Williams paint plant again. I found four Sherwin-Williams tank cars that were upgraded to serve the plant. One track platform brings finished packaged paint to outbound box cars. The boxed paint products are visible in the doorway. This factory is fully detailed inside. The second track primarily handles tank cars of solvents and other liquid paint ingredients. Judson Steel had many buildings around the East Bay at one time. This model was scratch built with Campbell's corrugated aluminum. SP-1009 is a Walther's model of an SW-1, the first diesel many roads bought before World War II. Bachman made this GP-7 number 709. It is a very smooth running diesel that was given added DCC. Many details including the correct WP headlights were added to the Bachman GP-7. Early Western Pacific Jeeps had dual controls, so they were easy to operate with short or long hood forward. The Atherin gondola with huge earth mover tires was an Atherin blue box model with modifications. The livestock car is a Intermountain ready to run model that had the letterboard changed from SP to Sacramento Northern. Arriving are two lifelike Proto 2000 GP9s in SP Black Widow colors. These SP diesels had silver and orange wings on both ends and were from subsidiary Texas and New Orleans until SP brought them out west and added the huge barrel headlights. 5894 and 5895 were dual control Jeeps also. These are all Intermountain ready to run models of various SP and UP Pacific Food Express reefers but the Woodside Western Pacific PFE reefer, with its ice hatches in the ventilation mode, is all scratch built. The SP Woodside 40-foot automobile double-door boxcar was a rebuild from one of our own 1950s Silver Street kit built models. The Spokane, Portland, and Seattle boxcar was an Atherin blue box kit with a number of upgrades and new paint and decals. Now Katie makes some compelling ready-to-run PS1 covered hoppers, such as these two red oxide colored models. The three gray ones are the modified model die casting models. The SP Bay window caboose was made from an Atherin blue box kit. It's a little too modern for our 1956 time frame, however. Let's take a brief pause and look at the two covers of the Build Better Model Railroad DVDs. You might see them at your favorite hobby dealer, or visit our website and watch their previews for more information. Now back to the layout for more ideas. This local feed mill was scratch built from embossed brick sheet stock and plastic structural shapes. It was inspired from an in-scale article in one of the model railroad magazines back in the early 1990s. The windows and doors are made from the same plastic sheet stock to get the desired look of the prototype. The grain bins and tall leg are from Rick's and Walter's sources, cobbled together. The truck loader is made from styrene sheet stock and structural shapes. The Diablo name is Spanish for devil. It was common in the Contra Costa County area that could see Mount Diablo from nearly every vantage point. This cafe was a Blair Line laser kit, number 194 in HO scale. It was really originally a Santa Fe section house, but I was so intrigued with its looks and I needed a cafe for the rail yard workers, so it was repurposed as a cafe. 
The term blue flag refers to the safety flag that car and track workers put on equipment so others won't move it while they might be in dangerous circumstances. This fine model had added interior to make it more believable as a cafe. Behind Jeep 709 is our CalPAC Del Monte food plant, where all those canned peaches, pears, and even fruit cocktail came from. Reefers in with fruit and boxcars out with canned goods generates lots of traffic. These plants were called CalPAC in the early days, eventually all being labeled Del Monte. Design preservation modules, now from Woodland Scenics, supplied the basic pieces for the left half of this 54-inch long plant. The other half came from Walther's Modulars. This little farm was far bigger before the railroad laid tracks through here. It was further cut back when the feed mill bought more of their land. This chicken coop is homebrew with prizer chickens. The old Dodge Power Wagon is from Bush with some added weathering. The farmhouse is from combining laser kits from Laser Art number 624 and Laser Kit from American Model Builders number 798. The windmill is a Walther's kit and the crops are from Bush. The backdrop is an eight foot long portable painting made here from acrylic paints. Across the street are a few more conventional homes. The painted backdrop resembles the hills of the Contra Costa County rural areas. The house on the left is an Atlas number 712 and the white home is a BTS or better than scratch laser kit company kit. The post office was made from a Grantline Valley Seed and Feed store. The front facade was removed and the sides were reversed. It's a board-by-board -board basswood construction of a wood shop with a side shed to protect products from rainfall. I moved this box works from the Oakland area to a produce loadout siding to supply fruit crates and wood pallets to the fruit packer company. The Hunt Brothers loading shed was a model made long ago of the Sacramento Northern Oakland Freight Transfer Shed. Lately it was altered to be used here. Every rural town needs a hay dealer. The office for this one was a revised BTS number 27480 called an Anderson Pulpwood Kit. The kit came with a tool shed on the left that was included with the main model. Hay was often loaded into livestock cars and moved out to feedlots and pasture areas in earlier times. The corner drugstore was one part of this long city block that was a resin kit from the 1980s. Today it's a plastic kit from Walther's called Merchant's Row, Roman numeral 1. This city block has interior scenes and LED lighting. The radio and TV shop down the street is modeled after a real Mr. Benewig that sold old tube and shortwave radios when I was a teenager. The curve in the street is a space for a little city rest stop with a drinking fountain and a path to rear parking. You can see a customer grabbing a newspaper and the barber waiting around. The market was made from two City Classics West End Market Kits. The larger roof was made from cut and folded illustration board to form this shape. All the cyclone roof ventilators around the layout are metal castings from Showcase Miniatures Century Foundry Series, number 2153. They are the finest ones I know of. The interior details, LED lighting, front overhang with the three banks of fluorescent light fixtures, and the vertical signage are add-ons. The air conditioning on the roof is just silver painted basswood strips and small blocks. The various design preservation town models are modified and built into the town. Before model power kits came to an end, this was called Bob's Hot Dog Stand that formed the basis of this little business. This was a 1940s era resin kit from Scale Structures Limited. The number is SS1531. Rescued and rebuilt old wooden metal kits from Silver Streak, Atherin, Varney, and others are a big part of this layout. One of our recent flea market finds is this door and a half Wabash 40 foot car from the 1920s era. The reverse lettering scheme on this car makes it a little more interesting. 
The Wabash car and another example with Phoebe Snow markings has dry transfer letters from CDS Lettering Incorporated. This car started as a Great Northern Silver Streak kit. The cast ends are typical of kits in the 1950s. The doors are new replacements. Some older kits had fairly crude roof ribs, just wood rectangular strips really, but these are easy to replace. These are thin tapered basswood strips with a flattened 031 inch diameter solder wrapped around the roof's edge. The new ladders are number 33327 brass from Precision Scale Company in Montana. We have several Tyco 50 foot flat cars from discarded old train sets rebuilt into some very nice models. These aren't highly regarded by advanced modelers, but they can be reworked into nice models, and as used items they are almost always virtually given away. The simulated wood floor is detachable, making painting easier. The bottom of the frame has fairly nice detailing for a toy train set car. Some of the finest kits of the early 1950s were Atherin stamped sheet metal kits. This one, rebuilt, kept the original Atherin artwork on the sides. The metal attached parts are replaced along with KD trucks, couplers, and KD brake wheel. Grab irons and stirrup steps are from A-Line. Ladders from Precision Scale, and the roof walk is etched stainless steel from Plano model products. Another find has been several Silver Streak C30-1 cabooses that have been reworked to look more like the Dash 2 version. SP used these roughly from the 1920s to 1960s. These can still be found in unbuilt kits too. Adding modern Tomar H-807L LED marker lamps is a nice upgrade. SN1611 was scratch built years ago. SN1616 is a modified Walther's number 932-7515, ready to run Denver and Rio Grande model made to look more like an SN caboose. Pacific Fruit Express once had some Western Pacific participation. This model brings that back to our layout. It was scratch built some years ago, mostly from wood and with metal hinges and latches and car ends. The ice deck was featured in a construction article in Railroad Modeler magazine. Since then the canopy and lighting were added. The ice house is from several small man warehouse kits by City Classics with the windows filled in. So far, eight of these Atherin all-metal reefers were found in flea market sales and rebuilt. Considering they came from the 1950s as kits originally, they can make some impressive models. When equipped with Katie couplers and trucks, better grab irons and ladders, and scale roof walks, they can look pretty sharp. Years ago, I made a batch of eight of these inexpensive plastic kits from model die casting. The cast-in steps and grab irons were removed and replaced with metal ones. A few more details, new paint, decals, trucks, and couplers were also added. The floor had no rivet or floor detail, so loads were fashioned to hide that. Two are now in Sacramento Northern service and they frequent the loadout location of the quarry. The next three cars are all 80s vintage Atherin plastic blue box 50 foot box cars. All have the cast in ladders and grab irons removed and replaced. Cutting the embedded ladders out of the dreadnought ends and avoiding spoiling the ribs was tedious. Now they feature real wood flooring too. A model magazine article prompted the scratch built Santa Fe car. It represents a World War I era panel sidecar as rebuilt by Santa Fe in the 1930s. The doors are from Atherin Blue Box kits. The ends are Zamic metal castings from the 1950s kit era. Oakland, California was awash in neon animated signs in the 1950s, even in the industrial areas. They were especially haunting when the bay fog rolled in. Here's an animated Miller Engineering sign that captures that mood very well. 
Next is a roll by of an SP Black Widow dressed train master by Atlas with many of the cars we've reviewed. After watching this presentation, I hope you have come up with a few ideas for your own layout or planned layout. Many of these things you saw here are available at your local hobby dealer. When you also see our DVD videos there, remember that when we produced these videos of real railroads, we gained many ideas for our own layout from working with all that historic material in editing. Stand by for a couple of clips from these Charles Smiley Presents DVD videos, and thanks for watching. We have many videos of historic events, such as the hard coal roads and what went wrong. Let's look inside for a few moments. Our window back in time will review what went wrong with this and other roads in the area. Roads such as the Lehigh Valley, the Erie Lackawanna, the Central Railroad of New Jersey, the Reading Company Railroad, and the Delaware and Hudson Railroad. After that, we'll see how the colossal Penn Central merger and its swift bankruptcy that followed affected the entire eastern rail scene, and it sealed the fate of the former anthracite roads forever. The common theme was their early success based on hauling anthracite coal from a unique area in Pennsylvania and the decline of that business. The last decade of these roads largely depended on a declining business in hauling bridge traffic. Our animated maps made especially for our videos are used to keep the viewer more informed. The corporate history of these five roads is woven into a wealth of wonderful all-color railroading scenes. Next up, we'll look inside the Western Pacific Railroad from the Bay Area to Salt Lake City and many branch lines. Back on the Oakland side of the bay, we run through WP's main yard and see trains from the cab and from trackside. From there, we take a cab ride to Niles and see many industrial areas that have since moved out of California for good. Niles was a busy place once with a crossing of the Southern Pacific and a tower that controlled traffic. We'll watch several freight and passenger trains here. Heading east from Keddie, we feature beautiful sunny spring weather to Portola. Don't miss all those great locations many never brought to the screen before. Well, that's just a brief glimpse of this all movie film presentation. All of our railroad DVDs contain great trains with real relevant history, maps, and great sound. All the old film has added an accurate sound. These are just a few of our titles. They represent things you can no longer see since all the independent roads have been rolled up into a handful of super mergers. Many of these videos have color film that goes back to before World War II that still has color so well preserved it looks like it was shot recently. That is the miracle of Kodak film. 
For model railroad builders, these videos can improve your modeling. You can observe your favorite roads in real action and earning revenue back in the day. See the mix of foreign road freight cars in trains that you can emulate. Get better views of the paint schemes and shades of colors and how the equipment was weathered. Look for DVD videos on our website covering rail topics of steam, diesel, plus electric, interurban, and streetcar systems from the past. From our archive and other resources, we use old film never seen before to create these productions, bringing history and beautiful scenes that you can no longer see. This is the home page of our website. The numerous videos are on a number of pages, and in most cases, clicking on a DVD cover face will reveal a preview video for viewing. Thank you for watching.